Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV with me, Jerupides. And we have the little girl with us. We need to get her to safety. But one thing that I want to point out right before we do that is I kind of miss talking about the biggest change from the Japanese, which is the title of the game. I figured most people know this, but I might as well talk about it anyway. This game in America was called Final Fantasy II. It is obviously actually Final Fantasy IV, and a lot of that uh, matters with regard to the changes that were made. The reason being, it's easy to feel like, oh, they cut all this stuff and that just sucks, but they did do those things for a reason. Now, I agree with some of them and I disagree with others, but their reasoning was as follows. There were two subsequent games to Final Fantasy on the NES that US players did not have the benefit of playing, and jumping right into this one with as many changes and without the benefit of having played the uh, sequels would probably be pretty confusing for a lot of people. So that's why they added all the extra training rooms and cut out some of the more complicated stuff to kind of simplify it to make it a little bit more palatable to people that may not have, um, you know, been playing games of this type this entire time. Now, I feel like that's still kind of a bad decision, but they did make it for a reason, and I feel like their reasoning is somewhat sound to a degree. The other thing that I missed talking about was I mentioned that Cecil's Darkness attack was cut, but uh, I didn't talk about what it does. And what it does is a more powerful attack, but it costs you some HP. And now that I've got all that out of my head, let's get this girl to safety. And Cecil says she must rest. So we're going to take her to the local inn. Welcome. Oh, take her to the room. Hurry up. Money? No, that's okay. Go ahead. And we say thank you. You okay? And she doesn't reply. Uh, and Cecil says, I haven't heard your name yet. She still doesn't reply. And Cecil says, I know I've done an awful thing. I can't ask for your forgiveness. But at least let me protect you. Please. And she still won't speak to us, which is completely understandable. <laughs> However, our request to protect her is going to come up right now. The officer says, I finally found you, Cecil. And Cecil says, wait! The officer says, His Majesty decided that the callers of Mist are too dangerous to be left alive. And Cecil says, What? The officer says, Hand her over. And Cecil says, No. We will not be handing her over. Now, this fight's a little bit interesting where you do want to kill the soldiers, but you don't want to kill all of them. But if you leave too many of them, they're going to kind of beat you up pretty badly. Now, I hope that I can let one live and be okay to kill the officer. But they do a decent bit of damage. 24 is not a small number. Oh, I missed. That is not good. <laughs> All right, six isn't so bad. Oh, come on, we gotta hit him. Well, this is just a nightmare. <laughs> there we go. But if we kill all three soldiers, the officer will run away, and I want to kill him for that sweet, sweet XP. He's back to hit me for 24. This is getting a little dangerous. And I keep missing. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use a Cure 1 on myself. That's a nice, comfortable life total. He's 
got a decent amount of HP, that's for sure. Shouldn't take too many more attacks, I wouldn't think. But frankly, the longer I get to listen to this song, the happier I am. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Yeah, he's gonna run away now. <laughs> All that work for nothing. Can I kill him? Yep. <laughs> well, that's okay. We still get 480 XP. And the girl asks, did I get you in trouble? I'm sorry. And Cecil says, it's for me to apologize. Well, I know you can't forgive me, but... And she says, but you protected me. We sure did. I'm Rydia. And Caller Rydia joined. And I want to say something right now. I had an epiphany about Rydia uh, literally the other night. I was thinking about uh, pronouncing names. You, you've probably caught me once or twice calling Cecil Cecil. Um, because when I was a kid, I didn't know how to pronounce any of these. Because, you know, I was a kid. And I didn't understand Japanese pronunciations. But it was still a huge revelation to me that Rydia is probably Lydia. Because in Japanese, you don't differentiate between L and R sounds. And Rydia is not a name, and Lydia absolutely is. We're still gonna call her Rydia, but I was like, what? Can that really be? It must be, right? Anyway, uh, Rydia is with us now. She trusts us. Let's go, Ikuzo. And we're gonna check all these pots really quick, and then we're gonna go all around town and talk to everyone. Don't need to stay at the inn. Yeah, I do end up with a full heal, but Rydia ends up uh, at level one. So we're gonna put her in the back row. And so she is already pretty decked out, but we will still check out the uh, Weapons and armor shop if we can. Uh, Tella has brought his daughter Anna alone, but Anna ran away. It's interesting news. Let's see what they have to sell here. All the same stuff? Okay. And let's check out the second floor. Kaipo's special refreshment for desert parched throats. It says perched, but they probably meant parched. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way to Fabul, but a strange old man is denying the way in the watery pass. Hmm. Only the Damsian royalty can enter Cave Antlion to the east of Damsian. Interesting. Welcome. We have few customers these days because of the monsters. Yeah, I imagine the monsters will uh, tamp that down a little bit. Due to the fact that they're probably murdering anybody that wants to go anywhere. Someone picked up a sick girl from Baron falling down. Interesting. A girl from Baron, you say? That's where we're from. Welcome to Kaipo of the Damsian Desert. All right, well, let's check out the weapon shop. Since it's right here. So we could get her a staff, but we don't really need to do that. And we could get her a bow and arrow, but we don't really need to do that either. She's pretty fine where she's at, and we only have 930 gil. So I think we'll hold off on that for now. And what about in here? So this is the training room. This is one of the uh, changes for this town. They literally changed the uh, map to include this. Added a door to this building. Um, and that feeds into what I was talking about, where that's why they expanded the training room so much, is just to help people who... 
uh, would be less experienced with RPGs, understandably, because they weren't released in America. Now, I joke a lot that they think Americans are stupid, but I don't think that's really true. I just think they're the developers were thinking they'd be inexperienced. But let's talk to everyone and get all the tips. To make a record of your journey is called Save. We already know this. Uh, we already talked to you. Maybe this is all the same stuff? Hmm. Well, let's check upstairs. But if it's literally all the same dialogue, then that's great, because we could just skip it. It kind of seems like it is. Yeah, okay. It's all the same stuff. Interesting. I guess I didn't realize that it was just all of the same tips. <laughs> That's, like, significantly less helpful than I don't know more of them. Um, and then the other thing, I may have mentioned it already, but naming ways were in unique locations in all the towns, um, and they've just all been moved to the training room. But thankfully we don't have to read all of that, and we can just move on. Let's check out the armor shop. Um, cap cloth leather iron ring. I think she's already decked out, but maybe we can get her some leather? Nope, she's all decked out. Sounds good to me. Oh, I didn't check that pot. I doubt there's anything in it, but... I feel compelled to do so anyway. Underground waterway is northeast of Kaipo, but eight big sea snakes are blocking the way. I wonder if we'll meet the eight big sea snakes at any point. Anna fell in love with a man, but Tella didn't allow her to see him, so they ran away. Yep, that's the classic, I forbid you to see this guy, and they're like, well, now I want to see him even more. Ooh, a dancer lady, let's talk to her. I want to go to Damsian to be a dancer. Watch me dance. You got it, lady. She's kind of a synchronized swimmer. I like the, the leg sticking out of the water. Is that a leg or a hand? I feel like it's a leg. Their front and rear row is the party's battle formation. Place weak ones in the rear row. We already knew that, but ooh, an ether. Love that. Uh, we already knew that, but yeah, we do want to place uh, Rydia in the back row because she is level one for now. And let's check out in here. The girl from Baron was kept from falling down. She kept calling a name. Do you know Cecil? In fact, I do, because I'm him. And I love this. If you interact with the fire, you just shout, Ouch! <laughs> and it's Rosa! Rosa. Rosa doesn't reply. Hmm. Cecil. Don't leave me, Cecil. And this guy says we need Sand Ruby to cure the fever, but it is in the lair of the monster called Antlion. And so we're going to need some Sand Ruby to help out Rosa because she keeps falling down. And <laughs> the book tells you the best remedy for the desert fever is the Sand Ruby. I don't know how she caught the desert fever. Maybe it was coming here. Um, but what the... Uh, what that falling down stuff is trying to tell you is that she, I don't know, becomes dizzy or whatever. So we know a couple of locations, um, so we need to get Rosa some Sand Ruby to cure her fever. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But we know along the way there's an old man blocking the passage, so a lot of stuff is going on. But what I'm going to do is get in one or two fights before I get too far from town. First strike, love that, because Rydia has 30 hit points. And we're going to use her rod... Um, and it gives her this kind of, I don't know, pelting attack. It's very strange, but it is a thing, so we're gonna use it. This sandpeed is not going down.
because she should level up, like, pretty much every fight. Yep. And she's quite the powerful mage. Right there, she leveled up twice and learned two new spells. So now she's got a cure spell and an ice spell, and she can summon a chocobo. Which is handy to have. And I think with her at level 3, we're kind of ready to hit the road then. Um, let me see. Yeah, we have five Cure Wands. That should be good. But I do want to hit the inn. Yep, for the low, low cost of 50 GP, we can refill her MP. And now she's got some useful spells. And let's go. All right, we got there with no random encounters. That's sweet. So this is the watery passage south. And I don't know which way I want to go, so let's just go left. should be able to deal with most of the stuff in here with physical attacks. Um, I don't want to spend too much of Gridia's MP right away. But, you know, now just, like, saying it out loud, Ridia, like, I used to pronounce it Rydia, similar to the way that, uh, I think most American kids pronounced, uh, Ryu in Street Fighter Ryu. And that just kind of made sense in my head. I don't know, it's a fantasy game. People have, like, fantastical names. But when you say Rydia out loud, you're like, that's absolutely Lydia. <laughs> but she'll always be Rydia to me. And we'll just have to keep an eye on her uh, HP until she levels up a bit more. Sight is not a super useful spell, but that's okay. All right, this is the uh, way forward, so we're going to double back a little bit. I'm gonna try to kill this uh, water bug if I can. Because they like to run away and they're worth a lot of XP. Uh, I don't want to spend another ice, I don't think. All right, it hasn't run away yet, so that's good. I hope I don't mess this up like I did that <laughs> officer fight. Oh, he's gone. Not quite strong enough to kill him yet, but that's okay. We'll still get a reasonable amount of XP from the rest. And this round, they should go down. Alright, there we go. I hope Rydia keeps leveling up. Nice. There's my lit. That's what I want for it here, for sure. Um, I should probably... Yeah, I should probably heal her up. We do have an ether on us, which is good. But I'm gonna try not to use it right now. Yeah, we definitely don't want to miss these treasure boxes. 
Okay. Now let's go talk to this old man who is so rudely blocking the way forward. The old man says, What? You wield the dark sword? Help me! I beg you! And Cecil says, What? <laughs> they both meet each other and go, What? What? Uh, the old man says, A wicked bard tricked my daughter into running away to Damsian. And I sense evil in that direction of Damsian. And Cecil says, You must be the sage Tella. I am Tella. I'm going to Damsian to get my daughter, who eloped. But a huge monster is blocking the way. My magic is not strong enough to defeat it. Your dark sword might help. And this girl is a caller? She is quite gifted, I sense. Uh, we are also on our way to Damsian. And Tellus says, good. Let us work together to get to Damsian. Let's hurry. And Tella joins the party. And Tella's pretty awesome. Let's check him out real quick. First of all, I want to get him in the back row. But he starts at level 20, which is fantastic. Oops. Let's check out his magic selection. Um, he's got Cure 2, Charm, Blink, Heal, Life, and Exit. And then Fire, Ice, Lit, Stop, and Psych. Now, Psych, if I remember correctly, absorbs MP from an enemy. Um, Stop is what you would expect. It's a time elemental spell that uh, casts the stop status. Uh, meaning that enemies are sort of paralyzed. And then uh, Fire, Ice, and Lit are fairly obvious. Cure 2 is a nice one to have, and so is Life. And how's Rydia doing on magic? Got Ice 1 and Lit 1. She still needs a few more levels, but we should be okay. And I don't have any extra equipment for Tella, which is a little concerning. His defense of 5 is pretty bad as compared to Cecil's of 18. But we're going to keep going. 120 gil, I like that. All right, there we go. Tella's bolt spell did 420. Nice. Let's take these guys down. Let's see what we get for actually killing that uh, bacteria thing. Oh, not very much, actually. Okay, maybe that's not worth doing. Ooh, cave toads are new. Let's try casting uh, Lit on all and see how that works. Great, but still interesting. And it gets better once you drop one, so... I don't want to waste a ton of Rydia's MP, though. I think Tellus is more important. He does a lot more damage. Alright, that might be the way out, so let's keep exploring. Uh, I remember, we gotta kinda walk through the waterways here. Ooh, an iron ring. That is good. Let's go ahead and throw that on Tella. He's gonna need that defense, although he does have a very high HP total. And I'm just gonna explore around as much as I can. If I remember right, there isn't much else. Ah, something behind the waterfall. Of course there is. Here, two, an elixir, and a thousand gill. I love it. You have to put something behind the waterfall, and everyone knows that. 
think we're done in the waterway. So let's head back to the door out of here. And I do love the uh, quality of life improvement where it tells you what floor you're on. That's so helpful when it comes to following guides or whatever than just trying to memorize it the way you have to in the first game. Especially in the dungeons that get more complicated and kind of go up and down. I'm gonna check this, but I doubt there's anything here. Of course not. Another cure potion, I like that. Ooh, zombies are new. Um, yeah, they are fairly immune to physical damage, so we could try casting Cure on them. I kind of like it. Let's do it. Kill them all! <laughs> For the low, low cost of 9 MP. That works for me. Alright, where? which way do I want to go? Let's try left first. Alright, Rydia just leveled up. She's almost got 100 hit points, which will be good. I would appreciate that. Another ether, I like that. Useful treasures in this one, for sure. Tella says, let's take a rest here. Let's do exactly that. A special field here will protect us from monsters. We can use our tent or cabin and even save. Let's rest now and be prepared for the coming battle in my tent. And we don't even have to spend one of our own tents. Tella brought his own. Fast asleep. She must have been very tired. You said she was... Uh, Caller of Mist. She seems very gifted as a magic user. With proper training, she will be able to wield the magic other than calling monsters. How sweet. Just like Anna's childhood. And Cecil says, Anna is your, and Tella says, only daughter. She ran away to Damsian with a bard, because I did not consent to their marriage. What do you want to go to Damsian for? And Cecil says, my friend is suffering from a terrible fever in Kaipo. Although he calls her his friend, and they're not friends. They are definitely together. Uh, Tella says, so you need the sand ruby. So you too are in a hurry. What is, this mon what is the monster of this cavern? It's a horrifying monster with eight huge tentacles. We must defeat it first to save Anna and your friend. Let's go. And we will defeat that monster. Let's go ahead and save up first, though. All right, let's get to it. But I do really like that campfire scene. Ice Rod is new. Let's go ahead and give that to Rydia. Um, I think it's one of the only times you sort of have a uh, scene where everybody just is chilling by the tent and talking, but I think it adds a lot of atmosphere. So one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the removal of one of Tella's abilities. Um, he has white, black, and then what got removed was an ability called Recall, where he would cast a random spell of any kind, but you need to have enough MP to cast it. Um, I kind of agree with removing that because it seems kind of dumb. Like, why would I cast a random spell when I could just cast one for sure that's useful? Oh, and it also has a 20% chance of failing. <laughs> so, stuff like that, I'm like, just get that out of here. Why, why is that a thing? All right, a couple of items. But I believe, yeah, we are at full uh, health and full MP.
So I guess I should say that the reason Tella's ability existed was to kind of give you an idea that he had forgotten a number of spells in his old age. But, once again, it's a very useless ability, and I really don't mind them cutting those out, even though they're supposed to be kind of, like, flavor text to make the character more memorable. Alright, and I do remember there being some fairly exciting treasures in here. Another ether, I like that. Wow, lots of ethers. Okay. Uh, tiny mages are new. I believe they cast tiny, and you really don't want them to do that. Let's drop a lid on everybody and see how that does. One damage, okay. Oh, I just lost 18 MP on that? That sucks. Oh my god, stop it, dude. <laughs> we gotta get this guy out of here. Yeah, they are quite the casters. But I think this might be the first time we're getting a look at the uh, ice rod. Which casts ice one. Which you can do every turn for free, and that's pretty sweet. And then I swapped the rod over to Tella. Oh my god, we're just gonna lose all our MP. <laughs> Alright, get out of here, buddy. Oh, I thought Cecil was gonna come up there. Didn't really want to attack with Tella, but we'll be just fine. I will say this, the active time battle system has made me make several mistakes so far. <laughs> Maybe they're right about us Americans. Three hundred and sixty XP is quite a bit. That's sweet. But we do need to heal up a little bit. Fortunately we found plenty of cure potions on our way here. I think that should be fine. Alright, I remember there being something sweet over here, but let's find out. Yeah, the Darkness Sword. We get a shiny new sword, and that bumps our attack from 17 to 27. <laughs> oh, baby, that's good stuff. Ooh, an alligator's new. Let's try out our Darkness Sword. Um, I am not gonna spend too many more Rydia spells, I don't think. Yep. Sick. Yeah, Cecil's attack was already pretty good, and with a brand new sword, he's just a killer. It's awesome. And I do love how all of his equipment is real, real goth. You know, real Dark Knight stuff. Um, but I will say this. Uh, Tella says we can go out from here. The monster is in the cave beyond there. We should camp to regain our strength out there. Good idea, Tella. Um, but what I was going to say is that... All sort of references to... Uh, death and religion were removed from this. I mentioned uh, Nintendo's censorship policies at the time this game was released. So some of Cecil's equipment was actually named things like death. Like, he's closer to, like, a death knight almost. Um, but obviously they removed all those references. Now let's go take on this boss encounter. Here we are at the waterfalls. Let's go. Tell us says it's down here. And that's right, we've got to plummet down the waterfall. So 
So let's check out up here first. Ooh, darkness helmet and darkness uh, arms. Gauntlets, I should say. Awesome. It's like Cecil doesn't even need to be better. <laughs> but they just give you all this sweet equipment. Um, I feel like A, I wouldn't mind getting in a few more random encounters, and B, I kind of want to explore the watery area and just make sure I didn't miss anything over there. And while we're doing that, I guess I should talk about some of the changes made to Rydia, which aren't actually many. You can see that her um ability list is completely filled out. Um, and I feel like they wanted to do that for just about everybody. Um, the only changes they made for Rydia were, uh, they removed her Cockatrice Summon, and then the spells, uh, Protect, Shell, and Dispel were removed from the game. So I think the attack script for Asura, one of her summons, was changed to a healing spell instead of, uh, Protect, or maybe it was Shell. And that's about it for her. Alright, we're getting close now, I can feel it. Darkness armor and another ether. Alright, that's a huge improvement. Alright, I think we're just about ready to fight this boss. So let's go ahead and heal up. And we're doing pretty well on MP. I just kind of want to top up Rydia, I think. I mean, tell us about 50 down, why not? And Cecil's gonna be just fine. Let's do it. And Tella says he's coming. Octomam and count them. That's eight tentacles there. I think that's really nice attention to detail. And Octomam is no joke. So we're gonna drop our lit spells on him. Because he is, of course, uh, in the water. He is not going to enjoy this at all. And as we damage him, he's gonna kind of, uh, shrink, which I think is really cool. It's just really nice feeling, like, feedback, like... ...him representing the damage you're dealing him. He's no Ultros, but I do like his design. Although I think Octomam is kind of a weird name. <laughs> like, is it a, a lady octopus? Not clear. But I'd say this is going pretty smoothly so far. And he's down to three tentacles. So I don't think he's going to last very much longer. Tellus says, good job. He's slowing down. And we're just going to keep going with the same strategy. Just drop lightning bolt after lightning bolt on him. He can't have too many more hit points, right? Yep, there he goes. Down goes Octomam. And for our trouble, we get 500 gil and 400 XP. Uh, warp is kind of an interesting spell. 
and Telus says now we can go to Damsian from behind this waterfall. It leads to the exit. Let's go. So quickly, let me just finish my thought about Warp. Warp is one of the main spells that causes a pretty sweet glitch um, where you can confuse the game about where you are in the map. How it works is that the game saves your information, but if you kind of go up and down stairs or use Warp, you can confuse it to where you are and end up in an unexpected location. It's pretty cool. I don't think we're going to show that one off because I'm not really sure how to reverse it, but I feel like it's worth mentioning. And we are going to continue on to Damsian, um, and go get Tella's uh, daughter and figure out what's going on with all of that. But that's going to have to wait until next time because I'm all out of time for today. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.